Welcome! This video will be a practical guide on running Linux on your Windows operating system using Windows Subsystem for Linux or WSL. WSL allows you to run a Linux distro on your Windows operating system as a virtual, virtual machine with a tiny resource footprint. In this video we'll focus on WSL version 2 specifically. If you have a WSL distro installed, the Hyper-V virtual machine will be running constantly in the background. On one hand, that will use resources when your Windows OS is running at all times. On the other, you can run services like servers on your Linux virtual machine. And seeing as the footprint is very tiny in terms of resource usage, that works great. To use WSL, you must be running Windows 10 2004 or higher, or Windows 11. In this demo, I'll be using Windows 11. We'll do everything in an elevated Windows PowerShell. We must first check if we have WSL installed. To do that, run WSL. If it's installed, you'll see the following text. The simplest install of a Windows subsystem for Linux distro is to just run WSL dash dash install. This will install the default Linux distro, which is Ubuntu. And it's actually not a bad choice if you want to run Linux on Windows hassle-free and do the easiest setup possible. In this case, I want to show you a few options first. To do that, use the list and online flags. This will show you a list of distributions available in the Microsoft Store. All of these can be installed as a subsystem for Linux distro with the following command by just saying which distro you would like installed. As you can see, we have Ubuntu, Debian, Kali Linux, some LTS versions of Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Oracle, and the SUSE Enterprise Server. These are all easy options to install. In this case, I'll start by installing Debian, but any of these would be very similar. Just type WSL dash dash install, and after the D option, I'll type the Debian distro name and run the command. If this is your first time, it will take a little bit longer as Windows will have to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. But in this case, my distro is already installed. And it automatically launched in my Windows terminal. As this is the first time it's running, it's asking me to create a new Unix user account, so I don't use the root account. I'll just create a test account, and I'm already in my Debian distro. I would recommend using the Windows terminal to access your Windows subsystem for Linux shell, as it's already installed on Windows 11, you have the ability to open multiple tabs and your WSL distro will automatically be added as a profile here. If you open settings, you can set it as the default profile instead of the Windows PowerShell. I usually do that because I develop on Linux and I use the PowerShell only to configure some Windows settings, which is much more rare than using my Linux distro. Now, what we have here is a full Debian Linux running on a virtual machine. So we have the Linux file system. We can use apt to update our system and upgrade our OS. What's interesting is we can also run Windows executables like the Windows Explorer by using the file extension. That way I open the, Win the Linux file system in the Windows Explorer right here. WSL also integrates with Windows Explorer and you get this Linux folder with network drive. In this case, I can click Debian to open the same file system. Now, WSL 2 has one drawback. These network drives use the P9 protocol, which is very slow file system access protocol. You'll notice that it's considerably slower than native NTFS. Because of that, I would recommend using Linux software when you want to interact with the, with the Linux file system and, win, and Windows executables when you're using Windows files. Now, the slow file system access is actually pretty bad for development, if you think about it, because you would want to use a code editor or IDE on your Windows OS and interact with the Linux file system or with Linux in general to run executables, Node.js, Python, whatever. So, there is a solution to that. If you use Visual Studio Code for your development, there's an extension called WSL, which you can install. What this extension does 
is it runs a Visual Studio Code server on your Windows subsystem for Linux and allows you to open a remote window which connects to your WSL distro and now you have quick file system access from Visual Studio Code in your Linux file system and the integrated terminal opens your Linux shell. This eliminates all of the drawbacks of the slow file system access protocol. So far we have been working with the Debian distro. I want to show you how to install a distribution that is not available in the Microsoft Store. In this case I'll do Arch Linux as a popular alternative. To do that easily I'll use one of the most popular community packages for running Arch Linux on WSL. This repository will be linked in the video description. From here we have to go to releases and download a few files. We'll need the latest AppX file. You can also download the online version which will download the Arch root FS or you can download this one. As you can see it's 244 megabytes so it's not a big deal. And you need the certificate file. To install Arch you first need to install the certificate file. You install the certificate, choose local machine store and then you have to place the certificate in the trusted root certificate authorities folder or store. After the certificate is imported, all you have to do to install Arch is to run the AppX file. Now the installation is complete. To start my newly installed Arch, I have to search for the executable, which is called Arch, and run it. And now I'm in my new Arch Linux WSL instance as root. Now, at first start, we have to do a few things to make sure our Arch installation is usable. Some very basic things. This Arch WSL package also has a documentation for setup. It's also linked in the description and we'll follow it. We first have to, of course, set a root password. Next, we have to create a user and make it a sudoer. This will create the sudoers file. Then we create our user with a desired username and of course set a password for it. Great. Now, the next step is to set the default user of our Arch WSL instance as the newly created user. As right now, our WSL instance runs as root. For that, open PowerShell and run the following command. Archxe, which is our WSL instance, config default user and then type the username of your newly created Linux user. That's done. As you can see, after the default user change, you have to either reboot your computer or restart the WXSS manager from an administrative command prompt. After that is done, we can initialize the Pacman keyring to make sure we can install packages with Pacman. I'll start my Arch again, this time from Windows Terminal. And to initialize my Pacman keyring, I just have to run a couple of commands. Finally, run Pacman SU. And at this stage, your Arch is set up to a point when you have a user, he's a sudoer, and you can install and update packages using Pacman. With that, I'll wrap today's video. We explored how to install Debian and Arch Linux on Windows. We also saw some basic functionalities of the Linux distros on Windows and how they integrate with the Windows Terminal, Windows Explorer, and Visual Studio Code. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified when another video is released. Take care.